gang, what's up? And welcome to part six of the Light Burn for Galvo Crash Course. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about this cuts and layers panel up here and just kind of how to use it in the most basic sense. Again, we're not gonna get into all of the teeny tiny little details about all of the things that you can do with the cuts and layers panel. We're just trying to get you up and running. So we're gonna keep it pretty light for today, but if we just grab a square over here, and we create a square, we can see it. It shows up over here in our cuts and layers panel. Right now it's got a black outline and it's selected, so it's dotted. And over here we can see it's a layer zero, zero, which is black. Down here along the bottom of the screen, we have a bunch of different colors and we can assign this any one of these colors in order to have different objects on the screen use different settings and different hatch patterns. So it's very similar to EasyCAD. It's a little easier to use just because it's one click and you're good to go. So we'll just leave this with zero, zero for now. And so essentially when we want to hatch an object, we go to the hatch button in EasyCAD. All we need to do in Lightburn is change this from mode of line to mode fill, that's it. And you'll see that the square fill so it's, it's very very easy to do so this is going to hatch now it's going to fill that square now if we want to tell it how to hatch this square we're going to double click that layer inside of our cuts and layers panel and that's going to pull our cut settings editor up and this is where we get to dictate all of the settings that we want to use for the hatch so you can go ahead and give it a name if you want to give it a name we could just call this test layer one and we've got the speed so you guys know the speed right so we can set the speed to whatever we want say a thousand millimeters per second we have our power so we would say 80 percent we have the frequency 25 that sounds good this button right here show timings this will show your laser timing so typically your laser timing is not going to change from setting to setting but if you want to over right that you can check that box and set custom timing for this hatch if you want to but you won't normally be doing that and again we'll get to a timings tutorial very very soon so we'll be talking about how to set these but we're not quite there yet so we'll hide that for now up here at mode again we can change this so line uh, would just be like a cut line right and then we have fill which is a normal hatch and we also have offset fill. Uh, this is as close as Lightburn gets to the Aztec fill in EasyCAD. So if you're used to the Aztec fill in EasyCAD, uh, you would just use offset fill instead. It's basically center out. That's what offset fill is, but we'll leave it on fill for now. And you're gonna see a lot of really familiar stuff in here if you're coming from EasyCAD. We can do a unidirectional or bi-directional fill. We can also assign a cross hatch. So if we wanna cross hatch this, which I usually recommend, you can do that here. Here, we call it a line interval in Lightburn. This is just your line distance from EasyCAD. So 0 0.025 is kind of the laser everything standard on that. Lines per inch is linked to your interval. So depending on how you set this, if we set it to 0.5, you're gonna see that it changes the lines per inch. So you, if you're used to DPI, you can do it that way, but most of you EasyCAD guys out there are gonna be used to setting the interval. Uh, so we'll leave that at 0 0.025 for now. Your scan angle is gonna be the angle at which it engraves. So right now we have a zero degree with a 90 degree crosshatch. If you type in something like 45, we're gonna get the opposing 45s that we use on the channel all the time. And you can set this to whatever you want. You can set it to 60 or 19 or 23 it doesn't really matter you know you're gonna have to experiment that and find out what you like to do but you know usually on laser everything here guys we're doing a unidirectional or bi-directional fill with a 45 degree cross hatch and, and that does well for most things we also have the number of passes so you can set the number of passes here for just this hatch this would be equivalent to the easy cad loop count so if we hit five then it's going to run five passes on just this hatch on just this layer before moving on to the next one in the list. Again, we can leave that at one for now. Angle increment is for auto rotate. So if you're used to auto rotate, you can set an angle increment here and every time that it does a pass, it will rotate the angle this number of degrees, usually something divisible by 360. So you get a nice circle. So if we did 10 passes, each pass we could do a 36 degree rotation and that'll give us a full 360 degrees. If 10 passes is too many, you could do five passes. And we could say we wanna do 
18 degrees and that'll give us a full 360 degrees over the course of five passes and it kind of gives you like a nicer cleaner finish with less noticeable scan lines in your engraving so it's a little more advanced we'll leave that at zero for now but it is a really nice feature that they put a lot of work into building into the software for us we have a couple more settings down here wobble is for line generally so if we come down to line we can go ahead and turn the wobble on and wobble spirals the line instead of just marking in a straight line and that's really great for cutting if you haven't watched any of our easy cad cutting tutorials i suggest going and checking them out because we do get a little more into wobble and we'll talk about it at some point for lightburn probably not super soon but at some point we'll, we'll get into it but the any of the cut tutorials that we have up on the channel right now do a great job getting into wobble so you can check those out if you're curious We'll set back to fill here. We have flood fill. So flood fill, if you guys remember snake, the snake hatch pattern from EasyCAD, you can turn flood fill on and it basically connects these ends every other line. So it's an optimized hatch that moves very quickly. It's great for filling in large areas, but it's not great for a finished look. So typically if you're gonna use flood fill, you'll follow it up with a few passes of flood fill off to hide any kind of leftover muck from the flood fill. And down here we have our standard light burn fill instructions. So we can fill all of the shapes at once. This would be the all calc from EasyCAD, where it literally just scans across the entire vector, regardless of whether or not there are breaks in the shapes. You can fill groups together. So if you have certain items grouped together in your workspace, it will engrave those at one time before moving on to the next group or you can fill all shapes individually. So if you want literally every single letter engraved individually one at a time in a string of text, you can choose to fill shapes individually as well. And there are pros and cons to all of these, but when you're just getting started, I recommend sticking with fill all shapes at once, just to not overcomplicate it right now. And you can check out some of these other ones later. Last but not least, we do have our dot width adjustment down here. This is really a great tool for raster images. I haven't used it too much with vectors, and we talk about that in our photo engraving tutorial. So if you want to learn more about that, check out our recent photo engraving tutorial where we get way into exactly what this does. These two items down here, again, kind of out of the scope of today's video, but there is one more thing that I want to show you while we're in here, and that is sublayers. Sublayers are a really cool new feature that is brand new and light burn so here we have our test layer one and it's on black let's say we're trying to go super deep with this engraving right so we'll set our speed to 300 and our frequency is 25 that's perfect max power 80 that sounds good if we turn on the bi-directional fill that'll boost our speed we'll move a little quicker we've got the cross hatch going and you know what we'll turn on flood fill or snake as well just to really rip through this we just want to get that depth but every five to ten passes right we kind of want to run a cleanup pass we need to clean up that engraving and get some of that debris out of there so that our depth pass can keep doing what it's supposed to be doing you could copy this square and make an exact duplicate right on top of it and set individual settings for that color and then order those colors correctly which is a lot of work and that's how you used to do it in lightburn but now we can actually just add a sub layer so if i click add a new sub layer we get a brand new sub layer right here inside of the initial test layer for the same exact shape so we don't actually have to copy the shape again we get all the same functions here guys we can do the same exact thing so let's come back here instead of test layer let's call this deep engrave okay that'll be great and then we can uh let's see uh let's set our number of passes to 10. So it's going to do 10 deep engraved passes for us at a time. And it looks like a couple things got reset here real quick. So let's fix these up. So 0 0.025. There we go. We've got our deep engraved setting. And then this one's going to be our cleanup pass. So we can do clean up. So there it is. And for this one, we'll do like 750 speed uh, with a max power of 40 and a frequency of 45. And this is a great cleanup pass for us that will push the debris out of the way so that the deep engrave can continue doing its job. So now if we come down here, um, we set the number of passes to one and let's, you know, for the sake, let's just go for it. So 0 0.025, this is also a 45 degree cross hatch bi-directional, no flood fill on the cleanup pass. And I think that's everything that we need to do. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna run 10 of our deep engraving passes and then one 
of our cleanup pass. And you can add as many sub layers uh, as you want and it's going to just keep adding them up so you get new tabs and you can you can add more and more and more so you can do really complex hatch rotations and patterns within one single hatch shape and that's really great it's it's a really really great feature it's very powerful when you start combining these different things in order here so so it's going to do the first sub layer 10 times because we have our number passes set to 10 and then it's going to do our cleanup once now right now it's only going to do the first sub layer and then the second sub layer and then it's going to be done you'll notice now too in the cuts and layers panel the mode and speed and power say multi because we have sub layers where we're actually changing those things within one pass uh, if we hit ok down here we can actually see those sub layers over here uh, ready to go which is pretty cool and if we pull up the frame menu as if we were going to laser uh, here's where we can set our total count okay so um, we can either run continuously, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. We're kind of getting out of the spectrum of what I wanted to talk about today. But we could run continuously, and it'll just run those two. It'll do 10 deep, one cleanup, 10 deep, one cleanup, on and on and on until we stop it manually. Or we can run it on repeat, and we can set. So uh, we can set it to 10, and then it'll do the deep engrave 10 times and the cleanup pass once. And then it will go back to deep engrave and it'll move through that entire cycle 10 times before finishing. So if you want to go really deep, something like that is super powerful. Uh, so that repeat feature right there is going to allow you to run multiple sets of your sub layers. So um, again, very, very powerful. There's a lot that you can do with this. And we'll talk about these run continuously and repeat commands a little bit later when we start measuring our focal distance and actually marking some things. We're getting very close. Uh, you guys are being very patient, I'm sure. But I wanted to definitely spend some time talking about cuts and layers here. Let's say we are on our design, right? We've got a couple circles here and we don't want the circles to do that same deep engraving. That's no problem. Rather than trying to add like a different sub layer for these, we can just select them all. I'm just holding the shift key there and clicking them and we'll just assign them a different color. And once we assign them a different color, so these are using this pen number one, we can go in and do a whole nother set right here, guys. We can do uh, a whole nother set. So these maybe are just doing an anneal, right? So we'll just throw a anneal up there and we can say 300 speed, 25 power, 200 frequency. I'm making that up, but you guys kind of get what I'm saying. And so now with this set with one pass, what it will do is first it's going to do black because black is on top. There are little arrows right here to move those up and down. So it's going to do 10 deep engrave and then it's going to do one cleanup and then it will jump down to the blue and it will do our one anneal that we set up. And then it will cycle back to the beginning if we have those multiple passes set here in the repeat function. So unless you tell Lightburn otherwise, it's going to do things in the order that you have them in this list right here. You can reorder them very easily. It doesn't matter the numbers. So if we click blue and we click the up arrow here, it's going to go ahead and push that up to the top. So then it will mark the blue first and then it will come in and do the black. So. You can order these however you'd like in your layers and cuts panel. You can also have as many different layers and cuts as you would like. So we can make a couple more circles here. And if we just go through and we just start changing the colors, you'll see them just start to add up over there on the right hand side. So yeah, you can mix fills, lines, offset fills. You can mix them all up. You can add sub layers to whatever you want. You can also turn output off on some of these. So if you wanted to say, use them for framing, let's just get rid of these. We can draw a box. I typically do this with red, um, but we could draw a box right here and you could turn output off. So it'll show up, we can see our kind of outline or space that we should be working in, but it won't actually do anything with the laser when we run the job, which is very cool. So that is turning off output. You can also turn off show. So if you want it to mark, but you don't want to see it in your workspace, uh, you can turn show off. So those are those two toggles right there. And last but not least, the last thing we're gonna talk about today before we wrap up, uh, we do have our tools down here. So we have T1 and T2. So if we assign T1, to this rectangle. You can see our dotted lines actually got a little bit closer together. That's how you can tell you're in tool mode. And when we look up in our cuts and layers panel, we can see the T1 tool there. 
and there's no switch for output. It's not gonna mark anything that we set up with tools. We can either turn it on to frame or show. So when we hit show, again, it's gonna show us or not show us in our workspace. And if we turn on frame, it will actually consider the tool when framing. So we'll see this tool shape when we're framing with our red light, or we could turn frame off and just use the tool for our reference when working in our workspace. So totally up for you, but tool is a very safe way to create boundaries for yourself and kind of get things lined up without having to worry about it actually marking. It's never gonna mark the tool. So definitely a very cool feature if you need to align things, uh, get things set up. If you're making jigs or if you have an outline of something like a knife, this is the pen that you're gonna wanna use for that. Setting that to a tool setting, make sure that you're absolutely not going to mark that outline unless you want to. If we just come into blue for a second and we set this to line, let's just look at the line settings and make sure I'm not missing anything. We've still got speed, frequency, and power, so nothing's changing there. You can still change the mode. You can still change your timings. We've still got this number of passes here. Again, perforation and wobble for a different time. Tabs and bridges is what it sounds like. You can add tabs into these cut lines. And again, that's a future video for sure, because uh, these get a little more complex and will take a little more time and actually some demonstration to explain. If you know what they do, they're here. Uh, and if you don't know what they do, we will talk about it at a later day. So that's it, guys. That was the last thing that we needed to tackle before we could actually start marking with our laser. So next episode, we're gonna get into the laser tab down here. We're gonna talk about laser specific controls, how to fire our laser, and we're gonna prepare ourselves to find the focal distance of our machine so that we can focus our machine upright every time. So uh, that's all coming up in the next one, guys. But for now, I think that's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Lightburn for Galvo Crash Course. If you got value out of this one, don't forget to smash the like button, let everybody else know the content is good, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time we add an episode to the Crash Course. If you need help with anything at all, there are links to our absolutely 100% free Discord and Facebook group down in the description, right next to the link to the Laser Master Academy, the number one way to support the channel. We absolutely love what we do here, guys, teaching you how to use your laser engraving machines, and we wanna keep doing that. Every episode that we upload to the YouTube channel for everyone for free is thanks to our members over at the Laser Master Academy. If you want to sign up to support the channel, you can find out more over at masters.lasereverything.net. It starts at eight bucks a month. It comes with a bunch of bonus goodies for signing up, and it's an awesome community over there. So I hope to see you over there soon. That's all I've got for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you in the next one.